All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today we have some Trick Flow 270s that are going on our 512 stroker build. And uh, the only issue with them that we know of, got to swap the springs and retainers because we're going with a solid roller cam. So I've mentioned the cam to you before, and I can put the specs back up here. Um, it's a fairly mild comp solid roller, but these are hydraulic roller springs and I think tool steel retainers. So we're swapping to titanium and getting them nicer stuff on here. Uh, I just wanted, we'll bring you to the process. Mr. Rick's got some nice, um, well, he's got nice equipment everywhere, but we're uh, basically checking our spring pressures and we may end up going with a 50 thousandths uh, less keeper. So it would give it a little more pressure and we'll test all that in a minute. But here's the head, let me get a spring popped off and he can check the initial spring pressure. And just because you know, it says hydraulic roller spring. That doesn't mean you can run any hydraulic roller cam with it. As we found out with our dyno 500 for Dave. Uh, and we had some issues on the dyno. So if you hadn't seen that video, go watch it. It was good. And we made some nice numbers. Here's how we're going to run this setup. It is one inch 875 installed height. And that was using the minus 50 thousandths keepers from comp with the titanium retainers we got from competition products because the trick flow ones were out of stock i think i'll have to double check but that's how we're going to do it so he's going to squeeze the lenati springs that we have and see what our spring rate comes out 1.975 is going to be what we're going to have okay 249 now we're going to test at 1.235 which is one point three three five one point three three five for open one point three three five and there you are five seventy four and a half five seventy four so right now that coil bind is 1.15 and we are at 1.235. So that's what 85 thousandths from coil bind, the way it's being set up now, instead of 150 or 200 thousandths from coil bind. Yeah, you had 180 on the. <laughs> now we're better. Okay, the exhaust is 341 with a four. I think we're supposed to write that down. Okay, 341 with a four, and the intake is 341 with a two. Which is kind of just the opposite of how I would have thought it would have been. 341 with a 2. Huh. Okay, on the exhaust, it looks like we have. Oh. About 1. Or about 900. 9 tenths. Mm -hmm. Sounds tight, but we, we hope they know what they're doing, right? And on the intake, we've got. Oh. 1.2 maybe, yeah, 1.2 or so. So here's the teardown. And basically what has to happen is seals are coming off. We're checking, well, I have to wipe. They have a lot of this old uh, assembly stuff that is a little bit nasty. So I'm just wiping that, wiping between layers. And uh, we noticed uh, this one, I'll just show you an example. There's a single shim under this, and Rick's measured it. There was a single shim under that one. Uh, as we go down, this one, which is an exhaust, has two shims. Uh, this is a single shim. This exhaust has two shims, and it was either they were setting the installed heights, which we'll now check the installed height on those two versus the others real quick, and uh, they were making up for that, or 
they added the shim accidentally and it's got a funky installed height so we'll get to the bottom of that in just a second but it's part of the process here so since we are changing retainers and keepers i'm gonna go ahead and reshim now so to set all the installed heights the same so we were looking for 1.875 and this one is 1.8 Eight five, eight six, one point eight. So I'm just gonna write it right here. One point eight, eight six. How about that? So we know we need to put that fifteen thousand shim back under here. I'm gonna take this out, and measure this one, because I measured a couple and there was some discrepancy. So I want to get them measured out and we'll talk about it. So here's where we ended up. This one is right on the money, exactly what we need. Uh, currently, I've still got the shim out of that one. And it was 1.886. Uh, so you can kind of see they were fluctuated all over the board um, as TrickFlow had them set up previously. But they were hydraulic roller before. And we just uh, basically pulled one at the beginning of the video. It was like 1.94 installed height. So I know we're, we're shrinking it up a little bit here. But we're doing it on purpose. So it is what it is. Uh, these two are really nice. Uh, that 879, I can check and see, see what shims are under it. Looks like a, just a single 60. So I can go ahead and wipe him off and put him back in. Uh, if we add 15, that's going to put us too far below. So 879, that, those three look nice. 883, uh, what is that, 8 thousandths away. I can check and see what shims it has. It looks like a single 60. Uh, yep. So not much I can do there. This 899, I do believe, and I wanted to see what was under here first. There's our locator. It had a couple thin shims. So if I measure those, that one is a 30. And a 15. So in that case, I think I can just put a single 60 right here and take those two out. That'll bring us up a lot closer. What is that, 15 off around 180 or 174. Should be really close then. But I, I want to leave that locator with that. So I'm just giving you an example here as I go down the line. We're just setting spring pressures. But at the end of the day, we'll know these were set up correctly with our new springs new titanium retainers, and our new uh, minus 50 locks. Here's our completed heads. We checked our guide clearance. We set the springs up. Uh, we swapped the titanium retainers on and the other keepers. And they are now set to spec for the hydraulic, excuse me, the solid roller cam that he's going with. Instead of, these were ordered for hydraulic roller. I'm sure I've already said that 10 times, but. They're actually ready now to be cleaned up and uh, put on the engine. So look out for the 512 engine build coming up soon and the dyno time.